Okay, how's it going everyone? Welcome to week 7 of the NFL. Here is your start and sits at the quarterback position. Start, Baker Mayfield. Historically, we understand Baltimore has had a tough defense, but this season they're actually the third worst against the pass and Mayfield has been playing like an MVP. Next, Geno Smith. Smith has been sneakily good all season. He's player number 9 overall, and he's averaging 18.29 points per game, which is definitely usable. Finally, on your starts, Justin Herbert. He's playing against a terrible Cardinals team, and look for him to have his best game of the season. Next, your long shot of the week, Andy Dalton. Washington's D has been in the bottom 10, and Dalton's done well so far against average or worse defenses. Your sits, Anthony Richardson. Miami has a tough D, and they'll be without Taylor, and Richardson just has not looked that good this season. Next sit is going to be Patrick Mahomes. I know he is overall the best quarterback in football, but for fantasy purposes, he's playing without a lot of his weapons, and look for San Francisco to make a statement in this game and win. Finally, Aaron Rodgers. Even with Adams back, the Jets' problem is their O-line. They had offensive weapons, but their O-line is still terrible, so look for them to get after Aaron Rodgers, the Steelers D, and terrorize him all game long. Good choices on the starts and sits, Josh. We are looking at running backs, and I got J.K. Dobbins starting for the Los Angeles Chargers at the Arizona Cardinals. Dobbins has played 65% or more of snaps in the last three games, and the Cardinals' defense is ranking 28th against designed runs. Five running backs have already put up 15 points or more against the Cardinals this season. We're also starting Antonio Gibson of the New England Patriots versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Ramondre Stevenson still questionable for Sunday's game, and it's a favorable matchup for New England against the Jaguars. They should be able to be playing somewhat ahead, which means more run volume. The Jaguars have given up the fifth most PPR points to running backs this year, and they're giving up the second most receiving yards to running backs. We're also starting Kyron Williams, Los Angeles Rams versus the Las Vegas Raiders. He has 20 plus carries in two of his last three games and has scored at least one touchdown in every single game. My long shot of the week is Austin Eckler of the Washington Commanders versus Carolina Panthers. Brian Robinson has been questionable all week, was limited in practice Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, Eckler had nine rushes and five targets against a good Ravens defense, and he has had multiple catches in every game. So PPR, definitely look out for him. We are sitting James Conner of the Arizona Cardinals versus the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers are ranking fourth against design runs, no running back has put up 15 points against the Chargers since their first game. We're also sitting a pair of Cincinnati Bengals running backs, Chase Brown and Zach Moss. Bengals seemingly bench Moss after a third quarter fumble, so playing time is very uncertain there. Browns are allowing the 11th fewest points despite being down often in games and facing a lot of run plays. We're also fading Tampa Bay Buccaneers running backs Bucky Irving and Sean Tucker. Rashad White is probably returning and head coach Todd Bowles says Irving, Tucker, and White will all get playing time when White returns. Also sitting, Jordan Mason, San Francisco 49ers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Even with him shedding his injury designation from his AC joint sprain from last Thursday night, there's still a chance that he's going to see his workload on a cap. <clears throat> so I'm staying away from Jordan Mason. Lucas, what you got for wide receivers? Hi right, guys, how's it going? I have some suggestions for who to start and who to sit at wide receiver in week seven. First off, I'm starting Zay Flowers on Monday night against Tampa Bay. The Bucks are yielding the seventh most points to opposing fantasy receivers, and Flowers is on a hot streak. He's put up two straight games over 20 points in full PPR, and he hasn't scored a touchdown in either week. This lets us know that he's not a touchdown dependent player, and he can put up points by racking up catches and yards. If he scores, that's a cherry on top. Next up, I like starting Tank Dell against the Packers. Dell finally showed up for his fantasy owners last week, putting up seven catches for 57 yards and one touchdown. And it's no coincidence that his breakthrough occurred on the week that Nico Collins was missing from the lineup. With Collins now on IR, we can expect Dell to see increased volume 
and I expect him to make the most of his opportunities. I'm also starting Mike Evans on Monday night against the Ravens with some caution as he is currently listed as questionable, so check your lineup before Monday night to ensure that he plays. But if Evans is good to go, expect some fireworks as the Ravens defense has uncharacteristically given up some explosive plays to opposing wideouts this season. The Bucks will have to throw the ball to keep up with the Ravens, so expect Evans to have some nice numbers. And my long shot start of the week is Romeo Dobbs. Dobbs is still owned in only 43% of Yahoo leagues despite posting two touchdowns last week. The Packers spread the ball around to all of their receivers, so he is sort of a boomer bust candidate. But if you're in need of a flex this week, see if Dobbs is available on your waiver wire. Now on to who I'm sitting, and I think you have to sit Michael Pittman this week. Pittman was productive with Joe Flacco as his QB, but with Anthony Richardson healthy and ready to suit up as Indianapolis' starting quarterback, it makes it tough to play any of his weapons with any confidence. Pittman is also nursing and nagging a uh, back injury that is he's valiantly playing through. The combination of his back injury and the return of Richardson at quarterback make Pittman a sit for me. Next, I am sitting Garrett Wilson against the Steelers. Wilson has emerged as Aaron Rodgers' favorite target in the Jets' offense, but that could change this week with the arrival of Rodgers' old teammate, Devontae Adams. Couple that with the fact that the Steelers are the NFL's fourth-best passing defense in passing yards allowed, and this could be a very underwhelming performance for Wilson. And lastly, I'm sitting T. Higgins against the Browns. Higgins has been phenomenal the past two weeks, so I wouldn't really sit him if I had him on my team, but I do think he will finish under his projection as the Browns still boast a top-10 passing defense. And the Bengals may also pull away in this one, so the Bengals' game script could favor running the ball to drain the clock rather than passing the ball a bunch. So it could be a disappointing day for Bengals wide receivers. These are my starts and sits at tight end for Week 7. I'm starting Brock Bowers. The Raiders no longer have Devontae Adams, and this week it looks like they'll be without Jacoby Myers as well. Bowers should see huge volume in a game where the Raiders will likely be playing catch-up. Evan Ingram is also a good start this week. He caught 10 of 10 targets last week and should have another game of heavy volume versus New England. I also like David Njoku. He should be the primary beneficiary in the Cleveland passing game with Amari Cooper now gone. Cleveland is getting Nick Chubb back, which should improve their offense, and the Bengals don't play great defense, so Njoku could get involved a lot in this one. My long shot start of the week is Isaiah Likely. I'm not sure if the volume will be there, but if it is, he has a good matchup versus Tampa Bay. This game should be a shootout with both teams throwing the ball a lot, and if you're dealing with buys or injuries, likely could be a decent option. This week, I'm sitting Pat Fryermuth. He gets a tough matchup versus the Jets. Wilson could get Muth more involved, but I imagine the Jets will look good on defense this week and limit the Steelers' passing game. I'm also sitting Dalton Kincaid. He gets a tough matchup versus Tennessee, who's been number one versus the tight end position in fantasy points allowed per game this season. And finally, I'm sitting Sam Laporta. I wouldn't actually sit him, but I wouldn't expect him to have a big game this week. He just hasn't been getting the volume, and the Vikings have played great defense this year. These are my starts and sits at defense this week in fantasy football. This week, I'm starting the Buffalo Bills. They get a great matchup versus the Tennessee Titans, who have been horrible on offense this season outside of Tony Pollard. The Bills' offense should be improved this week with the addition of Amari Cooper, and that could keep the defense fresher and make them better overall. I'm also starting the Rams versus the Raiders. The Rams have not been good on defense in fantasy this year, but the Raiders' offense is in shambles. Madison and Bowers have played nicely, but they're going to be without Jacoby Myers, and obviously Devontae Adams is no longer there. I also like Green Bay a lot this week. They get a tough matchup versus Houston, but the Texans are still missing Nico Collins, and the Packers play great defense, and this should be a great game. And finally, I like the Giants as well this week. They've been the fifth-best pass defense in fantasy football this season, averaging 8.3 points per game on DraftKings. They have a really tough, a really good pass rush and play well in coverage. The Eagles' offense hasn't been great this year, although Saquon Barkley will be out for revenge. This week, I'm sitting the Bengals' defense. I know they're a hot start this week, but they haven't been great on defense, and the Browns are getting Nick Chubb back. I'm also sitting the Colts' defense. They are another hot play this week versus the Dolphins, but this defensive unit is banged up, and they'll likely be without EJ Speed, who is leading the league in tackles. They haven't put up good performances versus the Titans and Jaguars, and I would not touch them this week. And finally, I'm sitting the Ravens' defense. The Ravens are giving up 24.8 points per game. The Bucks are scoring nearly 30. Expect this game to be a shootout.